This is the fifth and final video in my First Growth Bordeaux series, so today I'm talking about all things Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. I'll start out by discussing Lafitte's illustrious history. I'll then discuss some of the reasons that Chateau Lafitte is so special. I'll discuss the two wines that Chateau Lafitte Rothschild produces, including the second wine, which is available for a fraction of the cost of the top wine. Finally, I'll get into some buying strategies for Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. Chateau Lafitte Rothschild was one of only four producers to achieve first growth status in the 1855 classification of Bordeaux. The other three were Chateau Aubryon, Chateau Margaux, and Chateau Latour. Mouton Rothschild was not elevated to first growth until 1973. While there may have been vineyards planted on the premises even earlier, the first records of vineyards being planted on Lafitte's property go way back to the 1680s, so certainly a very historic producer. The Rothschild family acquired Chateau Lafitte Rothschild way back in 1868. Lafitte has 112 hectares of vineyards. This makes it the largest first growth producer in terms of its holdings. These vineyards are planted to 70% Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Verdot. It's important to keep in mind, however, that the top wine is generally at least 90% Cabernet Sauvignon. The vines in the Chateau Lafitte Rothschild vineyards average about 40 years of age, but they do have some as old as 100 years. Also, because vines that are 10 years old or younger are not included in the top wine, the average age of the vines for the top wine is an impressive 45 years. Chateau Lafitte Rothschild is one of three first growth Bordeaux producers that are located in the Poyac Appellation, the other two being Mouton Rothschild and Chateau Latour. Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, however, is extremely close to the saint Estef border. And in fact, one parcel of their vineyards is located very close to Costa Stornel in saint Estef. But these grapes are actually allowed to be included in the Lafitte wines because they were included in the Lafitte wines way back at the time of the 1855 classification of Bordeaux and are thus grandfathered in. Chateau Lafitte Rothschild began using organic farming techniques in 2017 and by 2021 all the grapes that were included in the top wine were farmed organically. So what is it that makes Lafitte's wine so special? Well with Lafitte it's not about power and concentration although these are definitely not light wines, but you're talking about elegance in refinement with Lafitte. For a lot of top wines, I like to use the term intensely ethereal, meaning that they're light, elegant, and refined, but they also simultaneously have enough concentration and power to provide some real intensity on your palate. In terms of common descriptors for Lafitte wines, you're oftentimes talking about dark red fruit, cedar, tobacco, graphite, truffle, and spice. How does Lafitte achieve these tremendous results in the glass? Well, there's at least two factors that we should consider, the first of which is the soils in the vineyard. The Lafitte vineyard soils consist of a high percentage of gravel, which allows for excellent drainage, especially during periods of heavy rains in Bordeaux. In addition, these soils receive favorable sun exposure, which helps the grapes to achieve ripeness year in and year out. The second factor is that Lafitte takes a different approach to harvest than many producers. They don't try to harvest berries at the maximum ripeness level. Rather, they strive to harvest the grapes at varying degrees of ripeness. By harvesting grapes at varying ripeness levels, Lafitte is able to get freshness and aromatic complexity in the wines and also have different textures in the wines. It should be noted, however, that Lafitte wines require extensive aging to show their best. I would not consider drinking one earlier than 15 years after release, and many of the top vintages require much more aging than that. It is worth it, however, as there's something almost unrivaled about the drinking experience you can get with mature Lafitte at its peak. What wines does First Growth Bordeaux producer Chateau Lafitte Rothschild produce? Well, they used to produce a white wine, but they stopped selling that one in the 60s. So currently they're producing two red wines. The first red wine is the top wine, the Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. This top wine is generally a blend that consists of anywhere between 80 to 95% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5 to 20% Merlot, and 0-5% Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. Typically, however, it will be at least 90% Cabernet Sauvignon. This wine is matured for 18-20 to 20 months in 100% new French oak. This new French oak receives a special toasting and is produced by the Chateau's own cooperage, which produces about 2,000 of these barrels per year. Lafitte produces a whopping 16,000 cases of this top wine, or around 192,000 bottles every single vintage. So it's certainly a very high volume wine, especially relative to some top Burgundy and other collectible wines. The second Lafitte wine is the Carioide de Lafitte. 
This wine was first introduced way back in the 1850s, but has become extremely collectible in its own right. This one is also a blend that consists of a higher percentage of Merlot than the top wine. So generally the breakdown is between 50 to 70 percent Cabernet Sauvignon, somewhere between 30 and 50 percent Merlot, and again 0 to 5 percent of both Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. This wine ages for only about 16 months, only 80 percent of it ages in barrel, and only 10 percent of that is new French oak. And this helps it to make it more approachable, much younger than the top wine. So the idea is definitely that you'll be able to drink and consume and enjoy the second wine while you're waiting for the top wine to age. The production for this wine is even larger than that of the top wine. Specifically, the production is around 20,000 cases annually, which amounts to 240,000 bottles. If you'd like a price comparison, typically this one is about one quarter of the price of the top wine. So for the 2018 vintage, for example, the top wine is generally selling for a little over $1,300, where you can find this second wine for between $350 and $400. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level 4 diploma from the WSET, so I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Next, we'll discuss my buying strategy for Lafitte. Lafitte is expensive, very expensive. It's been expensive for hundreds of years, and that's not going to change anytime soon. The prices reached their apex, however, during the 2008 to 2011 time period, driven by substantial demand in the Chinese market. This demand was motivated at least in part by the fact that Chateau Lafitte wines were featured in a famous soap opera in China, and so a lot of people were buying the wine in response to seeing it on television in China. Also, Lafitte was the first first-growth Bordeaux producer to advertise and promote their wines in China, which also helped to increase demand. Prices did come down somewhat in the 2011 and 2012 time period, with many of the top collectible vintages dropping about 50% from their peak value. Nevertheless, they are still extremely pricey. Of course, anytime you're talking about very expensive, highly collectible wines, there's always a concern with counterfeits. Lafitte has been sensitive to these concerns, however, and beginning with the 2012 vintage, Lafitte has started having a code on each of its labels for both the top wine and the Carua de Lafitte, that allows people who purchase the wines to input that code onto the Lafitte website to confirm that the bottle is not a counterfeit and is actually a legitimate bottle. So certainly that will help to assuage any counterfeit concerns, at least for wines from the vintages 2012 and on. With Lafitte, I've often found that with 20 to 25 years of age on them, you can find some wines available in the secondary market for much less than the current releases. And of course the great thing is you can enjoy those wines much sooner after you purchase them than you can with the new releases. And so for example, I've been able to find vintages like 1993 and 1999 in the secondary market for about the price of a new release of the Carua de Lafitte, the second wine for Lafitte. So certainly whenever I can get a chance to buy the top wine for the price of the current release of the second wine, I think that's definitely something worth considering. With Lafitte, however, I would generally try to avoid wines from the 1960s and the 1970s. This was generally a bad era for Lafitte, and specifically I think some of the problems are attributable to the fact that they did not really have large blending vats at the time, and so they would bottle the wines on a barrel-by-barrel -barrel basis, and this resulted in tremendous bottle variation during this era. With respect to past vintages of Lafitte that are either in their drinking window or very close to it, in my view, some of the very best vintages you can get include 1982, 1986, the trilogy from 1988 to 1990, and then also 1995 and 1996. The 1990 is particularly notable. While that one isn't nearly as costly as a vintage like the 1982, it's in its prime drinking window right now, and it's absolutely phenomenal. We had a First Growth Bordeaux tasting last summer in which we had all five First Growth Bordeaux, as well as Le Mission Haute Brion, and Chateau Cheval Blanc, and seven out of the eight of us who participated in that event identified the Lafitte as the wine of the tasting. We tasted all those wines single blind, so we knew which wines were included, but we had no idea which wine was the Lafitte, and yet seven of us identified that as the best wine. So certainly very impressive amongst some very stiff competition that night. 
If you're talking about more recent vintages, 2003 was absolutely phenomenal. 2009, 2010, 2016, and 2018 were also exceptional. You can't go wrong with any of these vintages, whether you're buying either for investment purposes or for personal consumption. Oftentimes when I do these First Growth Bordeaux videos, I have people mention that they've been unable to try the wines so far, but what I would recommend is that you seek out opportunities to taste them, perhaps in a group setting. For example, you could attend an event like the Wine Spectator Grand Tasting, where they feature a lot of wine from top producers, and you can pay a fee to enter the event and then try a wide variety of top wines that you may not be able to afford individually. Another thing that I've found to work extremely well is that my friends and I will pool our resources and purchase wines, and that way we only have to pay our pro rata share of the wine, but we all get to taste it. If you'd like to learn more about Chateau Aubryon, Chateau Margaux, Chateau Latour, or Chateau Mouton Rothschild, be sure to check the links in the description below.